I'm confident that these three episodes of Picard attempted to tell a story. <laughs> Boy, howdy. Welcome back to Subspace Transmissions, a sub pod from We Were Gamers, a podcast not about Star Trek usually. Although we have an outstanding project for that podcast about watching Star Trek. This pod has bleeded into the main pod is what I'm saying. Mm hmm. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, this is our pod sub podcast where we talk about all things Star Trek. Not all things every time. Currently, we're watching, have watched Star Trek Picard, a series. Yeah. Uh, the whole first season is out, and you can watch almost every episode or every episode now for free. I for think, free. On, yes. I noticed if you that. You sign up for CBS's thing. I noticed that. Yeah. Um, so, Star Trek Picard was immune to ads. For a while, because I pay for the lower service of CBS, mm. which is ad driven. Um, and I wasn't getting any ads on Picard. And then they announced that Picard and all of CBS All Access, I think, is free for the current month of uh, for people to try and entertain themselves. So I think they gave Picard the series itself away for free if he used a certain code and then nothing else okay but if you wanted everything else they were also doing trial months okay um, of the whole thing right uh, so now picard has the uh, uh ad supported service attached to it which was kind of a bummer i was riding high there thinking that we had no I, ad picard for for less yeah. money i guess i hadn't thought about that but yeah i mean like they they were doing ads on mine as far mm -hmm. as i know um well, we thought that these last three episodes were going to be the easy ones because it would all be plot. And then they threw I mean, so much plot. There was plot. <laughs> they could have yeah. used uh could have used 10 episodes to tell some of this plot maybe, you know? Could have might used have been, might have been better. Four more. Because I would say four of the previous ones were good. So three, yeah could have spread this into three more episodes and also maybe um use some of that downtime earlier to not leave so many threads wide open and questioning lee yeah unanswered weirdness all right uh, look i'm just gonna start it off mega omega level spoilers for all star trek picard stuff from here on out i'm just gonna start with stuff because i have Andrew, I have to talk about this, okay? Okay. They stole the plot to Mass Effect 3. This is the same plot. It's the same thing. Boy. Like, they literally had Hold Mass on. Effect 3, and they're like, oh, let's do this. And they literally retold the same story. Um. Also, I wrote every single episode starting in episode 8. This is Battlestar Galactica. Let's see. The new You watched a lot more of that show than me. The new the new series, the the not the old one, but the new one, centered on the premise and it was whole wholly driven by the premise. Midway through the first season you real you are told the phrase all this will has happened before and all this will happen again. That the universe is in a cycle of of Organic life, creating synthetic life, synthetic life, destroying organic life. And and it's a cyclical process. Yep. Which is literally the plot of Mass Effect 3. And I guess in a roundabout way, all the Mass Effect games, but mostly 3. And then in Mass Effect 3, there are also magical ancient aliens that show up from beyond the universe and <laughs> wipe out all life. It's yeah. Yeah. Like it's really specific, the same stuff. Also, the there's a beacon, and you call them, and like it's wow. There's a monster in here, straight ripped out of Godzilla too, the one that comes through a portal with the tentacles. Oh yeah, yeah, that thing is uh, absolutely a monster design I've seen other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <sighs> uh, we went from this is fascinating Star Trek lore to like somewhere in the middle. Of, of episode eight being like uh oh we're yeah we're veering into something here that could still be star trek but also maybe they've picked up too much sci-fi from other places where where are we I headed mean, here 
Star Trek has always been sci-fi and there's always been weird episodes of Star Trek where it's like, ah, this one is the weird one where they go to this planet and do something weird. But it's always kind of like contained and has not been a like universe threatening thing like this one was. Um, Universe threatening. So Star Trek V is universe threatening, right? If the thing gets off the planet, the universe is destroyed. Star Trek Four. I, I, I guess Earth I'm thinking about if the, the probe movie. Gets... I guess I'm thinking about the shows here, not the movies. So this the is movies, more to I me feel like, like a movie kind of vein thing. of plot, right? Like the yeah. last, the last three episodes of this feel like maybe if there had been some supreme tight editing, this could have been a two and a half hour movie. This whole ten episodes, maybe. I guess. I, I mean, I guess you're right because. The movies are really the place where you learn that Picard and Data are best friends and Picard loves Data the most and is definitely Data's best friend and doesn't love the rest of his crewmates. Sure. You know what? Which Uh, is what this whole series hinges on somehow. You know, there was a sure a lot of stuff they told us to watch before this. Yeah, and none of them were all the movies where all of Picard and Data's relationship. Why did we watch the episode about lore and the crystal entity? Yeah, who knows? I, I don't know. Was the crystal entity the synthetic thing? No, from because they the stars. You have to contact them with the magic crystals that they have and the space magic to bring them in a beacon that looks like some weird pyramid thing that summons a portal to open it to the negaverse or whatever. I think we're gonna have to go through beat by beat to see how here. lost we got here. Yeah. All right. So, like, uh. It, at the end of episode seven, right? Where were we? Uh, seven shows up again, right at the end. Uh, and what's the Romulan's name? Which one? The guy the or good guy the, Romulan? Elnor. Elnor. Elnor and seven are the on samurai the, dude. The cube. Yeah. Um, right. No. So, yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Seven tries to. Uh, oh no! Wait, that no, is no. That's the that's beginning of eight. eight. Yeah, that's, that's the beginning, beginning of eight. eight. So, at the end of seven, they've escaped the planet. At the end of seven, Picard and the team have escaped the cube and are going to warp to the planet. I think they're right. Y- yeah, I think so. I think so. Mm, no, that you're. This is all eight. This is all eight. Seven is um that is all Riker's that episode. is all eight. I think. Oh yeah, you're right. At the end of seven, uh Riker says, Good job, buddy, and we'll you know, I won't try and stop you, and then Picard flies off. Yep. To go to the cube. Yep. And uh seven is uh called by Elnor or something. Yeah, Elnor or, or, shoot. Elnor yeah. Hughes murdered and Elnor calls seven. That's right. where we left off. So Episode eight opens with some pretty nebulas, and then there's this you get a flashback. The flashback, and uh, my notes just say, "Oh, this is an explicit episode because this show is explicit." So just there's gonna yeah. be some language, just so you know. Anyway, my notes Sorry. say, "Oh shit, JJ, you were right." <laughs> oh wow, what a giant surprise! Commodore O is Romulan. Or I, they do say uh, half Romulan. Later in this episode, we have glaring plot hole number one. Which one? Rafi knows that Commodore O is half Vulcan and half Romulan. Uh-huh. And no one ever suspected she could possibly be a bad guy, and they let her become chief of Starfleet security, even though Starf- she's from... Starfleet is very trusting, just not of synthetics, see? But they she, trust everything else. She just, is literally from your enemy's empire. It's not like a wharf situation where he's an orphan raised in Starfleet. Yeah. It shows her in the, the Romulan most, Empire. The and then they most let... obvious thing happened. Good. Oh, look, she was a bad guy all along. Good you saw God. her face the first time and you knew she was a no, bad guy. No kidding. We knew as viewers she was a bad guy. Right, like yeah. we knew there was no and they, chance. And they, and they, the showrunners, made no secret of that. Right? right from episode two or whatever, when you met her the first time, you're she like, mind melds. Bad guy. She mind melds though, 
And instead of saying, okay, well, she's a Vulcan and the Romulans got to her using logic. They proved to her that she had to betray the Starfleet. They just went straight to like, nah, she's like a half Romulan. And yeah, I mean, literally you know, just half like, Romulan, half Vulcan could exist. That's not like, a, okay, bro. But we had a bowl. Thing. We had a bowl that this show was, and now we're making a colander. And this is the first <laughs> hole of the colander. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yes, totally. Yeah. And it's just like, what, why would they do that? The leaky water begins here. The, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it begins to be fair. It began a long time ago, Let's but like, stick, yeah, look, we can, we can still stick a finger in the dam on this one, I guess. You know Maybe. what I mean? Maybe. Maybe. Not by the end of this episode, though. But by the end of this, things have gotten crazy. So so I see her in this scene, and my notes then go, wait, Romulans can mind meld? <laughs> because, okay. of course, we haven't gotten the explanation that she's half Vulcan somehow. Uh, but whatever. Uh, the crazy Borg lady is there with our uh, Nar- Nar- Narek's sister. What's her name? Narissa, uh, Marissa, Narissa, N- Narissa, something like that. I think. Uh, yeah, and they all you're right. Try to drive themselves crazy, looking into the infinite abyss or whatever. And now you've survived, and you're Jadvash. Hooray! <sighs> <laughs> this. I hate this whole thing. <laughs> I didn't it mind it so bad. It, I look. I don't as an idea for the like the source of the Jod Vash or whatever, it's like not a bad idea. Fine with me. Right. Like I, d- I don't like this whole scene and how it's executed. And like, I, uh, it drives everyone crazy because it's so evil. Like This is definitely the thing we want to worship and make the basis of our entire <laughs> religion and life. That's what we want to do. Well, there's like, the, there's an interesting thing later where Sutra is like actually maybe you are all crazy and this was meant not for you and you can't understand it and then they immediately retcon con that idea <laughs> uh no i like i think it's true right it just says like it's hey not, but it's not true because the message is the message hey when the synthetics come all life will be extinguished <laughs> Oh no! It's just so all organic listen. life gets extinguished, I man. Am, so yeah, it was like, okay, here you go, synthetics. Here's how to kill all the organics that are your yeah, problem. So the message was the same, anyway. All right, right. it uh, wasn't wrong. It just it's just easy for the synthetics to understand, and it drives the humans crazy. See, that's the okay. difference. All right, all right. Uh, it we, sucks. We jump. Back. It doesn't make it suck less. <laughs> it sucks a little bit. It doesn't suck a lot. Uh, it could have been a good premise. Oh, uh, yeah. So um, we're on the. We jump back Picard- to the cube first uh wait is this we, before their ship shows we jump up? back to the cube seven shows up at the cube and then we're gonna have the oh, seven right. elnor take over the cube uh stuff later but uh there was a sad moment here where i thought the beginning episode eight begins a theory that i have heading towards the end of the show which is that would have made a good side episode that would have made a good side episode that you mm. know and uh, the first one is Seven apparently knew Hugh because she asks where Hugh is. Yeah. And I thought to myself, oh, man, I would have watched a whole episode of Seven and Hugh discussing Hanging what out, should be the future of the stuff, Borg yeah. on this cube. Right. Like. Yeah. Um. So that was a side realization. All right. Back to Picard showing up on the ship. Wait, did, is this the part where he uh, is? He's like, oh, we're going to go to Deep Space 12 and yep. then lies. And then the Admiral shows up and swears at him again. Sure. But first they get to the ship and Rios freaks the F out. Yeah. And then like Rafi the, uh, also freaks out. I, I like whichever hologram shows up here. Is it the. Whichever, there's a, all man, the holograms are good. It doesn't matter. They have great one. accents. I don't. All of them are so good. And the, he does a good job making them all different characters. There's a Scottish one, an Irish one, a British one, a there's some like type a Spanish, of Spanish, Latino, or Spanish or something. Yeah. I, I want to say it's like Spanish or Castilian or something. It might be Castilian. Yeah. Uh, got it like a super gun runner vibe. That one. Yeah, uh, there are five, right? There's one. There's the hospitality, the navigation, the weapons, the, the medical guy. and engineering. 
Yeah. So there anyway, you go. Uh, I like when the one shows up in this scene and he's just like swearing in Spanish. <laughs> oh yeah, that's pretty <laughs> so good. good. Oh. Uh, Rafi freaks out trying to come up with more conspiracy theories, and Picard tells her maybe the thing I'm going to start using with my kids when they're older, where he asks her factor theory, where she's what? trying she's trying to come up with she's like saying all the things that could have happened because of this thing of eight and, and oh yeah and you know what's her face Gerardi is an agent of the Romulans and all this stuff and he just says is that a fact or a theory and she just shuts down <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I'm going to use that forever it's it's pretty good Um, I hit my limit episode 8 of just I was done with cursing I don't know about you but like in the middle of this episode everyone just starts cussing nonstop, yeah. and they don't stop yeah. till the end of the show uh there was uh episode 10 has less but yes yeah it's a lot of swearing yeah yep so, uh and gerardi had uh previous to this gone into like her medically induced coma and wakes magically up magically comes here. out of it when picard's back helpful they decide that they're gonna go to deep space 12 so she's she gonna turn, turn herself, herself in yeah mm -hmm. which is uh, good writing right Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. There's no she, she forgiveness. Has, she has come around on the fact that she uh, killed that killed Doctor Maddox. Well, and uh, there's no lover. And... There's no rewriting of Picard's character for him to be like, oh, well, it's fine. He's still Picard and says, nope, you're you need to turn yourself in. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, doesn't ever happen, of course. Of course. Uh, I liked that. Uh, they start talking about the Black Flag Directive here. <laughs> Oh yeah. Also, the, that's was it. Good. The admiral talking about that? Um, no. So it's Rios, and I think it's a little bit later in the show when we get the oh, story I... of the Ibn Majid. Um, am after I, seven, am I jumping ahead? Maybe yeah, I'm jumping that's, ahead. No, that's, yeah, you're jumping a little bit. Uh, there's not much in between. Uh, this, which the only stuff in between is the stuff with seven on the cube where there's another right. great scene about her reactivating the cube and then deciding to re-enslave the Borg. Oh, yeah, when she kind of goes full semi-queen here. Borg queen on all of them. We could just do all the Borg stuff now. Why don't we just do that and get it all out of the sure, way? Sure, yeah, yeah. So the Borg, she reactivates all the Borg on the cube to try and save everybody on the cube because she right. uh, knows that they're going to just start killing all the XBs. Um, right. So she reactivates all the current Borg, not the XBs, and then the Romulans space all the Borg. The Romulans are like, well, we saw this coming. Hit the airlock button. <laughs> Yikes. So I have a question, though. There were a lot of Borgs on that ship, huh? Also, in first contact, we know that Borg can survive the vacuum of space. Andrew, come on. You're asking a lot of the script writers of this show, you know to have like coherence or lore or pay attention to anything that ever happened in Star Trek before. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they're up to that kind of a task, like, you know, keeping continuity or anything like that. So now you can space Borg or are they just floating out there indefinitely? I mean, I guess they're just floating out there indefinitely based on what we know. Although I think that she shut down the cube again. So they're all dead. I think they eventually, uh, die because they must eventually die right because the they the human regenerate. parts of them they will to, eventually just right, die off right right that's a good point they don't have their uh alcoves yeah so they can't like recharge or whatever okay does. whatever so yeah that's about it didn't it matter anyway because this was their cool action scene of like seven you know doing cool stuff but then actually no yeah i don't know i it's a bummer it was a bummer because that that moment of Queen Seven was like, oh my, what's going to happen? And this begins the downward spiral of why were the Borg in this show? Yes, it does. It, it's a big question of like, you thought the whole thing was like Picard with the Borg, having to see them again, trauma, Seven with the Borg again, trauma, all this stuff. Actually, it turns out the Borg were like the red herring of the show and they kind of didn't need to have them at Complete all really. red herring especially in the midst of this episode when you still think the borg are a big part of this show because seven's yep. on the cube and they're trying to take the cube she's trying to save the borg 
and mm-hmm. the Romulans ran away and they tried to destroy it. And the Romulans were always investigating this cube the whole time because they were investigating synths. And at and the end, thought of this, it was the cube and that well, lady and was it, important. And yeah, all that, and at the end of this nope. episode, Gerardi tells her vision, and you figure out that like, okay, it wasn't the synths that we're making that destroyed the universe. It was somebody else that was going to come and destroy the universe. And so maybe mm-hmm. the Borg are those people or yeah, they're maybe related the to the Borg or something. Or maybe like the Borg were the people calling those people. You, like, you know, there were a lot of ideas. Yes. So but actually, I, no, Borg just not involved at all, really. I literally out. put in here like this is really exciting with the cube. How do the Borg connect to all this? It's got to be connected. And then, uh, yeah, nine and ten happen. So, OK, we nailed all the Borg stuff. We can jump back. To the story of the Ibn Majid, which was Rios' sh- ship where he was XO. Right. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the captain is, yeah, yeah. Because the captain is the one who uh, killed everyone, right? Right. So the, um, man, the timeline of this story starts to get a little out of hand on who's where, when, and how much time has passed. So at mm-hmm. some point, Maddox ran off to another planet. And in the time that Maddox had run off to another planet and created more synths there, synths is a very hard word to say on a podcast, synthetics there. Yeah. Uh, They then escaped the planet or went out in first contact. Or were sent out. Yeah. It's not clear. Like, did they just leave or were they sent? It was not well defined here on why they were. And then like, why? If if that. Okay. So this is the overarching problem. Why? Why yeah. do that? Maddox there's already no knows purpose. that there's a ban. That's why he's there. That's why they're there on that planet. So why did two of them leave the planet to try and make contact with Star? And then have like pre-programmed ways to get back. If you were going to send them out there, just send them out there with blank memory so they Which can't lead them back with to you. Soji and Dodge. Right? right, which is maybe why well, they sent out Soji and Dodge that way is because of what happens with the Ibn Majid. But Maddox would have been able to tell them, "Don't go; they're just going to kill you." Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. Or um, what's his name? Uh, Brent Spiner's character. Well, yeah, I wasn't going to reveal. There. Would also I guess, have been able. To I guess tell the reveal you. happens next episode. But yeah, oh yeah, whatever. I mean, uh, like, it doesn't yeah. matter. We already know. Uh, so the only thing I can guess is they tried to make contact with the Federation to see if because they had created some sort of synth society. They could now negotiate or something or make contact or whatever again. And then this fails miserably. And that's why they make Soji and Dodge, which they made them to find out whether or not they could join the Federation or something. I don't understand why they were out there still. Yeah, th- dude, there's no reason. I can't think of any reason why Soji and Dodge are out there, right? You you sent a person out before who looked like them and, it went horribly wrong. Everything bad. There's all this stuff with the Federation and the, you know, the synths and the band and all that. And like your response to that is let's do this again, but two times. Yeah. And like, then no. attract more attention to us. Yeah. It makes no sense. It, it is a, like a perfect example of like this happened because we needed to have a TV show, which sucks. Okay. Wow. There is a really good story told. However, Yes. By Rios about what happens on the Ibn Majid. I loved the idea of trying to put it together from five holograms. Yeah. Um, Rafi eventually just confronts him. Yeah. Um, it was a cool, the idea of that was pretty cool. It's like, oh, each of these know like, oh, this little part of the story and they all kind of know like this and the other thing. Right. And so she's able to get into um rios's head and say hey i know you need to talk about this and we get a really cool like when we first meet rios in the beginning of the show i had the impression that he had been in some sort of horrible battle or something on the ibn majid and that he had watched his captain die and that's why he didn't want to get attached but the true story is even more horrific which is rios uh, witnessed his captain murder these people because of the Black Flag Directive. Yeah, uh, Black Flag Directive. Okay, fine, fine. Maybe that's fine, right? Like, there's yeah. a directive in Starfleet that says the captains have to obey, uh, you know, uh, what is that order? 
<laughs> Execute um, order 66. <laughs> <laughs> reverse. It's reverse order 66. <laughs> it's the wrong, the wrong series, uh, but that's all I could think of. <laughs> what is the, the Black Ops uh, sector, whatever? Is it, uh, are you talking about like Black Alert? Black Alert, yeah, no, but they from... have the sector whatever. Section, oh, uh, section, section eight, six? section six, section something, something like that. Yeah, black section. <laughs> I don't know anyway. what it's called. Up in... Starfleet uh, Special Op. Black yeah, who I assume we assume stuff. later is going to be started by what's her name from the alternate universe, right? Section eight, I think. Anyway, yeah. uh, that's cool. It's a cool idea. Rios, of course, witnesses the murder and says. To the captain, I can't believe you did this. This is wrong. This is morally wrong. And I guess he berates the captain enough that the captain shoots himself. shoots himself with a phaser in front of Rios. Yeah. Which was it's horrific. Dark, dude. Yeah. I yeah. like that in a in a bad way. I I think it is a good uh, background for Rios. Uh, it is exceptionally dark for Star Trek. It is. It really is. <laughs> Uh, Rios then complies with the black flag or black flag order and has to clean up after it clean ups like, after cleans up after everything. And then they drum him out of Starfleet. Right. He's like, thanks for following orders, dude. Here's the door. Yeah, <laughs> man. Uh, which is crazy. You can, you can see why he likes drinking after that. I, you really can. Good. Good on him, I guess. Uh, for I pulling mean, it together yeah. enough to get La Serena. Um, I like his his story even more after hearing that, right? Like, yes, irrespective of the why the synths were there, you could imagine a better universe where they were there for a different reason or a different backstory, or this happened a long time ago and didn't have to involve Bruce Maddox because they wrote Noonan's songs kid into this show. It could have been related to that instead. Uh, you know what i mean it could have been 25 yeah. years ago and it was since that they murdered it didn't have to be this I anyway know. fine no big deal I, as much yeah. as we've been talking about this episode the exposition at the end of it is much longer <laughs> yep where they sit around a table and listen to gerardi and rafi come up with wild theories and then they go on them it is like let's all talk about stuff Everyone comes up with wild guesses about what they think is going on. Everyone's like, well, those are definitely the facts, and eight let's stars. operate according to those. It must be the thing. Let's, oh, yeah. the, se- the eighth one is cloaked, and it's hidden, and that's why there's it's missing. You can't see it in the pattern, but if it was there, and, it, uh, 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 and here we go. Time for TV. Yep. It's a little yeah. bit of a mess at the end there. Bit of a mess. And, uh, uh, I, I, do like, I do like that Picard tries to work the ship, and then is like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> <Gets up. laughs> and then they use the trans warp conduit, which is crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dodge uh, somehow knows how to make their technology be Borg ships and do that, which is a thing that no I like Starfleet the, ships really from have episode done. eight onward. Dodge knows how to do things is the new theory of how yeah. this show is going to work. Uh, we need this or, character to be Dodge, competent. Sorry, Soji. Now. Soji. Yeah. yeah. We need this character to be competent now. So let's, uh, let's do this. Her Android brain is on now. She knows everything. Oh, okay. Is this the end of is the end of this episode where Seven kicks Narissa off the No, that's in episode think, 10. Is it? Yeah, she Wait, okay. murders Narissa. What happens at like the 10. end? Of, I have I have notes at the end of this one that says did Seven just kill Narissa? Does that is something must that's have happened later. here. Your notes are wrong. Hmm. It's like episode 9 that that happens. I definitely watched them in order. So I don't something happened at the end here. Anyway, Narissa You you are right that uh seven doing that is at the end of 10 so yeah uh okay episode nine we open up with a beautiful red alert noise i love it love red alert uh but this is a new one the the red alert noise on la serena is a new red alert noise for sure oh okay and it's it's very uh enterprise e times two i love it uh it was good my borg hopes in episode nine were continued to to be amazing as the borg cube uh they're <laughs> fighting so they're fighting right like the the Narek and la serena are shooting at each other yeah yeah so Narek sneaks into the conduit with them right yeah pops out and, and starts then blasting them starts shooting at them they're having then, a hard time 
And, and then, then they're like, you know what we need to do? We need to rescue this guy who has been attacking us. Oh, That's wait, it was a trap. Thing. Oh, we got trapped. How did we know? How could we have possibly foreseen that this would be a trap? Who cares? That board cube <laughs> comes out of the trans warp conduit. Yeah. And that it was a cool moment. So cool. They did such a good animation job on that. Like the and digital then- animation on that cube coming out of the trans warp conduit and just shooting its way out of the conduit and you're like whoa and cool like, pew, pew, pew. and then you get the, all these I got, orchids i got that like tingly feeling where i was like are we gonna see 200 romulan ships fight a board cube in the next episode because that is what i want okay you know what Andrew? i'm just gonna go ahead and disagree with you that's not what i want why i don't ever want giant space battle from star trek that's not what the shows are about I don't need some of the like best 500. In- mm. I, I don't need 500 ships all flying around shooting lasers at each other in Star Trek. Okay. That's Star Wars. I don't need that here. All right. But but one in 10 episodes, one space like, sometimes, in 10 episodes. Sometimes the ships, sometimes you got to have the ships shoot at each other and that's right. fine. And so like in Discovery, you have the big battle at the beginning of Discovery and then that's kind of it. Yeah. And that's fine. And so, like, having episode eight or nine here, if there was, like, a Borg cube fighting Romulan ships for a minute, that would have been good, I think. I liked I liked La Serena and the little um, Romulan ship shooting at each other. Yeah, and, it was good. And, you know, the big Romulan Doom fleet showing up, even though, like, where did Romulans no, 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 get all no, no, no. these? We're not talking about the Romulan Doom fleet yet, because I have... All, where did they get all these ships? Hashtag and then, thoughts. Where did the no, Federation not, get all getting, these ships? We're not, we're not talking all, about yeah. this yet. We're not doing it because the show's right, still so anyway, good at this point. Let's not ruin it. Mm, is it still good? Mm, well, anyway, a million, now we got to talk million, about orchids. A million flowers show up in space from somewhere that isn't And they ever crash explained. the Borg cube somehow. And they grab La Serena and the Borg cube and they crash it into the planet. Um, Picard has a seizure, I guess. Yep. Uh, and they he reveals he has this terminal condition. And then my note is, finally, they choose not to split up. (laughs) For the first time. For the first time in cinema history, (laughs) everyone everyone says, maybe we should stick together, and then nothing bad happens. (laughs) I know. It was like, I literally, I, I wrote that note down because I thought it was so amazing that they were like, the dumbest possible thing they can do here is what they're going to do and split up. And then they all were like, splitting up's a bad idea. We should definitely stay together. And I was like, standing and applauding the screen. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but, but they stick together. Then just long enough to until the then cube. they can split up. Yeah, but then they walk to the Borg cube. They're like, hmm, that crashed cube's probably destroyed. Let's walk there anyway. Let's see what's up. Because Hugh might still be alive. Didn't they see? I guess they didn't see him get killed. He got killed after. Right, he got killed away. after. Uh, That's right. So they walk to the cube. They find Elnor and Seven are there, and then yep. Se- Seven gets an amazing Voyager music sting as she kicks dead bodies off of a ledge. It was good. I I heard it and I was like, oh, this is that Voyager song. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, good. And I thought we got one of the best lines of the show. After a very confusing thing happens here, they walk to the cube, say hi, find out Hugh's mm-hmm. dead, ask to use the long range scanner, use yep. the long range scanner, and then oh, say, Oh no, the Romulans are here. Oh no, there's 200 ships coming. And then literally it's like, Elnor, seven, goodbye. See Later, you dudes. never. <laughs> good luck <laughs> with this cube. Up. Yeah, good luck with I, this cube. We- we, we definitely won't need you we don't ever need you again, again so ever. Bye. Maybe you should try and get this thing working so you can blast the Romulan ships, but we're leaving. It was like, yep. wait, what? What? What is the plan here? What is the... Why are these people in this episode? Why did this cube come to this planet? I don't understand. And then... Uh, they were done with this plot thread, Andrew. They just had to be like, all right, look, bye. Dude, and, then, and then there's what should have been foreshadowing right now with a line here that I'm going to bring up later where seven tells Picard to good luck saving the galaxy again. And Picard says, that's up to you now. Just remember that line later. 
Because that is the epitome of of foreshadowing. I, or anti-foreshadowing based on what happens in the next episode. There can't be this many red herrings, man. Something bad happened right around here. You no, know, I think I think the script writers disagree with you. Some, uh... <laughs> something something changes right around here. From here to the end of ten. Okay, Some, there was there was a moment here where around episode nine point five, I have a theory on later. Okay. Anyway, I'll be happy to hear any theory. I just think that uh, all your theories don't matter because. It, they decided Picard last action hero is what they wanted to make actually I, and they did I, that I hear you I hear you and I see you so uh, we meet Arcana did I get her name right you meet a lot the, of people really fast Saga sim- Arcana yeah the synthetics all kind of start flowing they walk here. they walk into a place and it's full of uh, well, data faced synthetics yeah uh, where everybody is spray tanned gold and oh look. i wasn't clear okay so this is a question i had sure uh are all of them the same kind of synthetic as soji and dodge no and they're noonan they are noonan synthetics if they're gold and then soji I, and dodge are maddox synthetics okay so they're like data style synthetics you, you can see the the like saga and arcana are essentially a thousand percent data level synthetics because uh, Saga looks at Picard and says, oh, you are Picard. I have strange attachment to you. She doesn't say like, I have emotions related to you or whatever. She's just like, I feel, or she doesn't even say I feel. She said, "I, I have like strange whatever about you. And then we meet more synthetics that seem further along in their yeah, understanding like, I, of emotion and these other things that data would not have had. Yeah. So I, I guess I was just confused at that because like, definitely there were some of them where like, you know, some stuff happens here and one of them gets stabbed. Right. And like, there Sorry. are wires. Yeah. So Sutra. And you're like, okay. So then we meet and Sutra you, who is Jana's sister. Who is oh, right, this sister. Is the sister of the one that Rios knew. Right. So Rios met Soji's predecessor who is Jana, who is Sutra's sister, and yes. boy howdy, do we get some real great acting here? Hi, my name's Sutra, and I'm a super e- evil lore 2.0. Uh, don't worry, I'm definitely on your side, though, guys. Look how nice I am to you. Yeah, immediately I was like, <laughs> note number one here. Of course, Noonan Sung had a kid! Exclamation point. <laughs> we definitely never heard or nope. saw him doing anything nope. other than being a lonely yep. old hermit. He exactly. definitely had a kid somewhere off screen. We knew magically. he had a wife. Well, we knew he had a wife. We always knew he had a wife because that's why he started making synthetics because he was trying to do the thing that knew, uh, that Alton, Al- well, I think his name's Alton, um, is doing with brain transfer. He was trying to brain transfer his wife into oh into the perfect right, right, right exactly. Right, okay. So they just never mentioned that they had kids, but of course, right? Fine. Brent Spiner gets to come back as a Sung again, which is cool. But then my next note is, oh, look, Sutra is super duper evil. That's before we get to the dubious robot mind meld. Oh, oh man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. (laughs) That's the first note I put about Sutra. She's literally on screen for one minute before she tries a mind meld. Yeah. And I was like, oh, great. She's lore 2.0. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Yeah. I get to watch an episode and a half of she's obviously evil. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the end of the episode here, I mean, we get. Well, the, we get the know, dubious robot mind meld somehow. The message the ad- is still the same, except that it tells synthetics how to contact synthetics that can come wipe out all organic yeah. existence. And they're, they're like, your evolution is their extinction. Ha <laughs> ha. Look so how of cool course, we are. Of course, Sutra is like, evil. bro, of course we want to do this. Like, why wouldn't we? This yeah, is the perfect fuck, answer fuck these to humans, all our guys. Let's, um, let's do some murders, you guys. Aren't I murders did, cool? I did have the moment here where I'm like, okay, so is this the crystalline entity? Is that why we're going to have, are we going to have an evolution of that storyline here? Nope. 
No. How about ancient aliens from beyond the realm who are going to show up without any introduction whatsoever and destroy everything? Sure. Or, you know, not be connected to the Borg at all or anything else. But nope, nope. Ancient aliens, Andrew, they're ancient, okay? Mm-hmm. No one ever heard of them. You have to contact them in this one specific way, and then they come in and destroy everything. That's right. how the, these mm-hmm. ancient aliens work. All right. So Narek is captured, and what happens? Uh, the, He seduces an android, kind of? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, not really. No. <laughs> and then uh and then wh- what's her name comes and stabs the android in the face and frees him i guess right? i he convinces saga to give him some water or something and then sutra shows up and stabs her sister and then or her cousin or however you want to say Whatever. in the eyeball and, but like he he's like using his charm on the android who doesn't have emotions it's like i'm like why does she go get him water instead of just being like no yeah ah <laughs> uh, yeah I mean, look sutra we knew sutra was evil anyway right like that wasn't Right, uh, but it was clearly obvious. she's using it to convince the other synths. Right, there was no yeah, chance yeah. that wasn't oh, what look, she this, did. This bad evil human escaped because there's, I let him escape. Look, there's no way we knew that Sutra killed Saga, but I wrote it in my notes. <laughs> we don't find out till yeah, episode it, ten that look, Sutra knew. kills. Oh, I, knew. I, I, I feel like it was very clear. <laughs> it, it was <laughs> obviously the- clear because she tells Narek that she's going to use him to, you know, convince yeah. them to do the thing. I yeah. thought this moment here could have been accomplished differently getting here, but this moment where Picard gives the speech where you're like, this is exactly what he did with the Romulans and it worked and it's not going to work now. And you just knew your heart was like sinking as he kept talking. And you're oh, like, you're talking about in episode nine when he's giving the speech. So in or episode nine here, he's giving the start the, of 10. Yeah, no, no nine where he's trying to convince them. He's like, okay, look, I have a ship. I'm, I'm going to get the Federation here. We're going to go right, to the Federation right, right. and they'll do the right thing and they'll save everybody and blah, blah, blah. And before Sung even opens his mouth, you're just like, oh, my God, no, this is Romulan no, no, 2.0. Read the room, dude. Read this isn't going to go good. But it's a good it's a very good bookend to like Picard still thinks he's the Picard that tried to save the Romulans. Right? Yeah. Like, I, I agree that this that that part makes his arc from like. You know, it is like his low moment before he has to have his heroic uh, moment in the next episode, this is, right? It, it's this good. Is, this is good character stuff on him. This specifically. is point number two for a well written ending. One, foreshadowing. Two, the character realizes he cannot be the same after the arc of the show. Yes. Okay, we've we've established two very good points along the line of a good trajectory to the ending of a story. Mm-hmm. But then we have to start episode 10. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Picard uh, goes back to the ship with uh, Gerardi, right? Did you get it with the butterfly? Get what? There's a butterfly at the beginning before they go back to the ship. Oh, is this like the... There's a there's effect. a butterfly that's know. in the um there's a butterfly that's in the tra- in the opening credits mm. that we've never seen before and it's the same butterfly that's beginning at this that's at the beginning of this episode and the butterfly is in the room which ends up having the simulation in it we see it with um yeah is that the one like Picard puts out his hand and the and butterfly it lands colors on it? and then flies away yeah um. The butterfly has been not in the show and is used here as a metaphor for data, right? Got it. So data has been in the show the whole time, obviously. And so they used the butterfly in the credits to signify that the show was about data. Which makes some sense here at the end. Sure. I I was not uh, taken out of left field when data starts showing up. Yeah. I guess I did not uh, explicitly put the butterfly together as that, but it, they, it makes it a, makes sense. It's a subtle one that could have it could have shown up other places, and it might have been more. It could have been overstated a little bit more and used, and it would have been really good. It's just a little understated here, and so it's like one of those things you have to kind of piece together. I was too distracted by all the other exactly. Nonsense. To think about the butterfly. Okay. I was like, oh, this is a nice, pretty scene. I'm happy about this instead because it's not doing any other bad things. All right. Run us through the beginning of this until we get to the Romulan proverb. <laughs> uh, 
So Picard and Gerardi go back to La Serena. Uh, and I forget what happened to everyone else. Previous previous to that? Were, did they sneak Narek, off? Narek's... Narek escapes, Narek right? Narek escapes, goes to the cube, gets his gets, stuff. Gets magic bombs or what whatever. What is Nerissa... How is Nerissa even there? She's good at hiding in corners, I guess. She was on a ship two episodes ago. Don't think too hard about this, my man. Okay, okay. It's really important that we start this episode by mentioning the Romulan fleet, which has been at warp for God knows how long. Magic Romulan ships, yep. Okay, Mm -hmm. the Romulan fleet, however they got 200 ships after their entire race was destroyed, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, yeah. 200 Romulan birds of prey are on their way to this planet. Mm -hmm. They've been in warp for a while, Mm -hmm. and they're two days away. You know, that's why they were using transwarp, see, because it's faster. Just keep that in mind. Okay, Picard sends his distress call at the beginning of this episode. Right. Right? Yeah, it's the beginning of the the episode where he's like, you know, I, I need to quest the federation come to the aid of yeah you know, these people and establish diplomatic relations and mm-hmm. yada so forth mm-hmm. uh and then picard makes his like last plea to uh soji and don't make a bad Sutra. choice you have no imagination. He's like, don't, <laughs> don't do what don't do what they want you to do don't be the bad people they think you are and they're like yeah no no thanks old man get out of here yeah uh and they get they send him packing and they give them this magical little tool and right. Then, like, bye. And then they all go back to La Serena, where Narek shows up throwing rocks, like holding a boombox and playing like "I love you" or something to the girl in the window. And then we get the Romulan proverb that is literally straight out of Battlestar Galactica, uh... about how in ancient Romulan history there was two women and one destroyed the universe on beating on a drum. I don't know. I couldn't and, even keep this one, one straight. And one sounded the horn that felled the heavens and the ancient aliens came out and of a portal that we definitely didn't know was a portal in this myth. And, and then they just say the quiet part out loud because he says all this was, you know, basically in different words. All this has happened before and all this will happen again. History repeats itself. And you're just like, oh, my God, it's it's a straight rip. You make synthetics, synthetics destroy you, you destroy synthetic. you know, like, it's a giant I mean, like, circle, I, just like the I same. literally, you know, I know you watched a lot of Battlestar Galactica more than I did, uh, and I liked that show quite a bit, um, but, like, I cannot emphasize how much everything that happens in 9 and 10 related to this ancient alien stuff is literally exactly the plot of Mass Effect 3. There are beacons. There's a destroyer. There's a person trying to give us over to the ancient aliens. There are people trying to stop those people. There are big fleets of ships. There's it's literally every single thing. Like, yeah. It is. It's a little tough here. And God. and what what's interest what's disappointing, not interesting, disappointing about it is you could just rip the story from Mass Effect 3. I wouldn't care if mm-hmm. you said it's the story from Mass Effect 3, but we have to use Captain Picard as Captain Picard. Yeah, the thing that's the reason why I mean, like, look, stories in sci fi and just stories in human history get retold all the time. That's right. not news. Yep. So the fact that they ripped a plot off is not even worth re- it. We're complaining about it here, but it's not even really that interesting of a thing. It happens all the time. Oh, the hero's journey, Andrew. How many of those have you? Right. 50 billion. Sure. <laughs> right. I don't, like, I don't mind it. It's honestly, that's fine. not a problem. It, the problem is that they do it bad. <laughs> and yeah. like, if it was, if it was done well, we wouldn't be complaining about that. We'd be talking about, Oh, this character did this thing. And this did. instead, it just feels like they were like, well, the script dictates we do this now. So everyone is going to decide for whatever reason that they need to do this. Things get off the rails right about here. Although yeah. there's still good one liners from, Patrick Stewart, he says like Soji's doing this because out of fear, and fear is an incompetent yeah. teacher. It, th- this speech I I wrote is like, hey, this is actually like a good speech from them. Very like, good. I liked I liked this part. Very good. They nail his him and they nail him. 
Uh, yeah. Sung discovers the betrayal that was obvious to everyone except for Sung. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and they now they split up. <laughs> and then we get the last <laughs> scene aboard the Borg Cube. Is it? I think it is. And this is the one you tried to tell us about earlier. JJ? Oh, where she kicks her off. Why? Kick, seven kicks Why? her off the ledge. And she dies Why? For some reason. Why? In the year 2400, do people still stand so close to people with guns? Your phaser shoots 200 yards in an exact straight line. And it moves at the speed of light. In theory, although, you know, not on camera. <laughs> Why do you need to walk into the room next to a deadly assassin and stand 1.5 feet away, which is exactly within kicking distance of the phaser? To have a cool fight scene. Seven throws Nerissa off the balcony. And nothing of value was lost. And nothing was gained by having the Borg cube on the planet either, because nope. then they just don't do anything with it. They needed to have a place for Narek to go and get the magic bombs, though. Jesus. <laughs> so the oh. whole point of crashing the ship was so he could get magic bombs and then go take them. And then Rios could reconstitute them into a soccer ball. It doesn't make any sense because... <laughs> <laughs> they fixed the La Sirena. Yep. They could just leave. They could, A, <laughs> leave. They could, B, <laughs> replicate the bombs. No, 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 Andrew. Come on. What? Are you... C, the whole point of the bombs is they weren't metal. So, like, you needed magic non-metal bombs. You know, like, things like food that the replicator can make. As shown in the coming scene, the La Sirena is immune to the Orkins. The, do the orchids no, don't wasn't. target. They don't target oh, La Serena. They're targeting. So again, the uh, the okay. So this is something they never explained, and I took it this way. And I don't know if this is true. I took it that there are people at the settlement controlling those orchids. Okay. And so they're like they're not targeting La Serena because it's helping them. Okay. So why? Oh, they don't explain it, man. There's a giant plot hole. They don't explain it at all. Why don't they turn the ship around? fly down to the planet and shoot the tower. Because Rios was going there with his soccer ball bombs. <laughs> <laughs> the Rios soccer ball bomb might be the best part of this whole series. You know, what do you, it, it as really, they go into the settlement it, with I love, the evil, the super evil love, uh, escaped criminal. I, hey, what's in your bag here? Oh, just this soccer ball that I definitely carry around all the time. Want to play random guard? I love no, two things human. about it. Two things about that are so sly and well written. One, the guard says, do you play? <laughs> like the guard yeah. has ever seen a soccer ball before in his life. <laughs> Uh, bro, soccer is the international game, okay? I'm sure that the uh, magical planet in Noonan, and er, uh, what's his name? Anton? Andian? I think it's Anton or Alton. Ant Alton Soong would have definitely brought soccer with him to these androids because he, like, you know. He looks like, not, Brent Spiner looks like a soccer player. He's a, Yeah, he's definitely a soccer guy, not like a football guy for sure. Okay. Or basketball. Two, Rafi flinches when he kicks the ball. <laughs> It's so good. Like she expects it to explode it to blow up. instantly. Yep. 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 So good. <sighs> oh man. Oh, I still can't believe they just like how is the plot? This is Colander number two. What we have now leaking beyond my thumbs. Oh, dude. We. Why don't they used, turn the ship around and crash it into the tower? We have a whole hand holding uh part of this bowl together and a finger stuck in the hole over here and now there's like three more big holes there, opening up everything is just opening there's like th do you ever see you like the dam is breaking and it's just like pouring over into the valley at this point do you, do you ever see u571 u571 is a great movie you know when that ship just takes such a big beating they can't fix it anymore <laughs> mm -hmm. this is where we're at with our submarine <laughs> That movie is actually super scary to like watch in the dark and all the sounds. Like you got to have good surround sound for that movie, and it literally will make you think your house is falling apart. Uh, if you really want that experience of like, I don't like this because I'm five percent claustrophobic. 
uh, watch Das Boot. So I heard that that movie was even more than U571, and I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Getting depth charged in that movie, if I watched that in a room, I would... I I had a problem. I had to get an MRI for my shoulder, and I am not claustrophobic in the sense that like I could stand well, you can't do this anymore but you could stand in a packed elevator and I wouldn't get claustrophobic uh mm-hmm. a stairwell or like yeah you know, I'm t- not a, a trunk of a car or something like that yeah. I would be fine but I opened my eyes in the MRI and I was like please pull me out of this thing for a second uh yeah the the uh that U5 or the DOS boot scene would get me if I tried to watch that in a dark room yeah, it, it's something about the like blank walls and stuff in those kind of medical devices that freak me out a little. Yeah, you know, anyway. that probably is part of it, right? It's like a completely white cylinder. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I'm happy that if I need another one for my knee in the next couple months, uh, I won't have to put my head in there. Yeah. I'm going to recommend don't go to hospitals now. I'm just that's, that's gonna my recommendation assume to everyone that my knee hurts because I'm an older person, not old, but like I'm Andrew. Let I'm me tell you, as a person things... who is old, who, a person who is older than you, you know, sometimes your legs just hurt <laughs> 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 or your back or like your elbow or whatever. Sometimes it's just like, you know, today is this part's day. <laughs> Katie told it gets me this one. I got oh, I can tell you a funny story because when when you're a kid. And they say, man, he slept like the dead. It means you didn't move all night, right? And mm-hmm. like you felt refreshed when you didn't move all night when you were a kid. Yep. <laughs> Katie told me she didn't move. She woke up in the same position she fell asleep the other night. And mm-hmm. I've had this experience too. My neck hurts and my back hurts because I didn't move around <laughs> during the night. I'm so, we're at that age where it's like, I can't sit in one position. I'll hurt too much. It's funny that I, uh, yeah, I I know exactly <laughs> that feeling. <laughs> uh, oh. I like that uh, uh, the, the the contrasting scenes here. There's a big space battle with all these orchids and stuff going on, and meanwhile, Seven and uh, Nerissa are fighting. Yeah, and it's like, oh, it comes back. We see more shooting, and you know, then the, the the fighting and stuff. It was kind of good. Yeah, it was all right. Um. God, I, I had to pause the show. I was laughing so hard I was crying. Are you excited by what's about to happen now? All of the dumb, dumb, dumb things we're about to talk about? I was laugh. I started, I paused the show at the opening of of the most ridiculous because I was laughing so hard I was crying when Commodore O said begins planetary sterilization pattern five. Because they have multiple ones. How are you going to, if you're just going to sterilize the planet, you got to know different have, ways. Why would you have five sterilization patterns? Oh, there's probably like 30, because that's what Romulans do. You know? And gotta, how many plans. times do you have to say, start it on my command, and then not give the command in the, we need to destroy the synths as a matter of utmost priority? It's clearly not that much utmost, because there were other things she decided to do, rather than do the thing that she came there for. Oh my god, I I'm I'm trying not to laugh again right now, or I just can't. My heart, Andrew. My heart. I want to talk about the Picard maneuver. Okay. They talk about it here. Yes, they do. As though this is what they did. It's not. No, that's not what the Picard maneuver was. So, uh, Gerardi somehow knows about the Picard maneuver. No, oh, this is something we could use the Picard maneuver. And Picard's like, that was that didn't work this way. This isn't how that would go. She's like, yeah, it'll be fine. Let's use this magical little magic and make a magic stuff. Let's <laughs> do some space magic. And here we go. This is where I paused a second time because I was laughing so hard I was crying when she picks up the the literal magic device. MacGuffin. Yep. The, the not magic even a MacGuffin, MacGuffin that repaired the it's ship It's not before. a MacGuffin. They weren't searching for it. They just needed a magic device to fill the plot holes of we can't solve this problem so she picks we need up to have a, a giant space battle andrew we need to how ocarina. are we going to get enough ships there's to have no a space, space battle. battle there's no space battle they start all, shooting at him oh my god it's a it's a ocarina and she an makes ocarina. a million of her little faces around her in the air 
and I paused for a second time in five minutes to laugh so hard I was crying. I was just like, this is dumb. I, oh my god. So they I make like other this. ships to try and stall? They make, they make a million little La Serenas to fly around and and make the Romulans think there's something to shoot at. The other um, La Serenas uh, fly around for a bit, then Picard's ship is hit. Yes. Picard and has I, another seizure? He, uh, or he's he's having uh some pains? yeah like wh- some pains and then he's like no Gerardi don't treat me like an old man I'm gonna Shoot give a good me with speech the stuff yeah give me give me the stuff so I can make a good speech and then die like a hero yeah Soji don't you want to turn off the machine look I'm going to give my life for you that will be enough for you to change your course of trying to save this your is, people this is what a good human this should is do what we and are look at- all about. Teaching you how to live the right way by so killing she, myself. So she's like Nabra and opens the thing anyway. Uh, or sorry, this is um, evil Soji, whatever her uh, name is. No, no, evil Soji gets shut down. This is so Rios has already tried to kick the soccer ball bomb into the thing, and Noonan oh right yeah, 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 yeah shuts that's right, down that's right. Sutra. Right, and then everyone's like, "Ah, oh, see, the humans so, are against us." And then, yeah, yeah okay, right. I uh, forgot. About so that. Soji uh, soccer ball bomb, and then she's gonna make the thing anyway. But Picard tries to say, "I'm gonna give you my life." Shut down the machine, and she doesn't do it. And then uh, the ship gets hit, and she still doesn't shut down the machine. <laughs> yep. Uh, fine. Okay. Uh, in the worst moment, fifteen minutes after the. Romulan fleet has been traveling for days to get there. Captain Will Riker arrives with an armada of ships that all look exactly the same with with 200 identical ships. Mhm. What? Yeah, I have a the- big giant I have a big giant note that says Will Riker why. This is uh this is fine Will Riker arriving. I'm okay. Yeah, okay I, with it. Maybe I don't mind that. The, I don't mind that he showed up personally. The, the timing didn't work out for me, unless they don't cover this, and they should have said it this way. Hey, buddy, I didn't believe that you didn't need help. So the minute you left that planet, I went and got an armada. So the. Uh, the only way I could believe this in my mind was that somehow this planet is much, much closer to like Deep Space 12 where they had this armada waiting for Picard. Right. So then wherever the Romulan this, thing was. This should have been explained better in that meeting, that holographic meeting between the Admiral and Picard where he says, I yeah. need a fleet. And she says it'll be waiting at Deep Space 12. Yeah. Riker had the opportunity here to be like, hey, uh, when I heard about that fleet at Deep Space 12, I went and took command of it and I brought it here right away. Yeah, that that would have uh, made me hate this less. Because I like Riker being in that uniform here at the end. And oh, yeah, dude, by the way, uh, Riker looks good in that uniform. <laughs> As a, I uh, love the line where he's like, I'm not sitting around making pizzas while you're out here. <laughs> And he's like, what do you think? I'm sitting in the wood making pizzas, Picard. It's like, it's good. Yeah, actually. It's good. I kind of thought it's you really were good. I was, I, I kind of did. Yeah, I did. You're I liked right, it. Riker. I did think you were just going to sit this out and make pizza. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please. Sorry for doubting you, Will. Please lead Starfleet after what's inevitably going to happen here because it's been foreshadowed and well written. It was? Anyway, so Picard, uh, then uh, then we have the realization uh, that things are not going to happen. I already knew nope. it was going to happen at the end here, right? Mm-hmm. Because, uh, I mean, it was start, very clear. It was very clear what was going to happen here, but I don't like it. Oh no, it's not good. Uh huh. You get the like, oh no, Picard is dying because Picard's it was obvious dying he, from his brain he took injury. The last, he took the last shot, and so now they're gonna, you know, it, it, okay, for a while. During this scene, right? So the scene, so it happens, right? Like Picard collapses on La Serena and then he wakes up in like a room with Data, right? No, 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 hold on. You gotta, you gotta, so Picard is having pains. He's on the the floor 
and he gives the second speech while the monster's coming through the portal. And then... But that's uh, when Will shows up, though. Yeah, and then she shuts down the portal after she sees that Starfleet's there. Oh, okay. And then, and willing to help them. And then the Romulans still somehow don't think that this is worth fighting over because... Our treaty says that Picard opened diplomatic relations with them. So I can't possibly be an evil person anymore, even though I've infiltrated Starfleet for 20 years and blew up all of Mars. I'm just going to not have this fight with my 200 ships. Yeah, we we definitely didn't come far enough to have a fight. Are we? Do we have any bowl left yet? Or is there still holes to poke in it? No, there's just water on the floor. <laughs> The the dam they just like they just moved the dam off to the we side and the entire lake the has spilled town. out the valley. Please, then, no, the, that town got destroyed. It, just got, it was it's just been the a tsunami crushed that whole town. Oh, it's like no. the, the farmland beyond it is flooded. The cows are washing away. Oh. It's just over. It's such a good moment that he's there with those ships, and that's like that was my that my was my second great hope was like okay, I don't like that all these ships look the same. And that we're not going to fight alongside a Borg cube, which would have been a great visual. But maybe we're going to get another chance at the space fight that would make sense because Commodore O spent 20 years of her life trying to destroy the synths and she's not going to let it go. No. Okay. They're just leaving. Nope. Nope. Got it. We spent all our money on the Romulans shooting the 8 million little La Serenas that weren't real. Yeah. That's where, that's where the money went. Okay. Sorry, VFX budget. Um... Okay, so Picard gives the speech to shut down the thing, and then he collapses. Yes. So she flies him down. No, she beams him down to try yeah, they and... beam him to the town where Dr. Sung has been released or something. Oh, yeah. I guess all the androids heard, heard about what was happening magically so, and so decided they, that he can help him. They give Picard his final moment with everybody. And then yeah. there's a... There's a bunch of scenes that are decent, I would say. Rios and Seven have a really good scene where they're sitting drinking. Oh, Everyone... I wrote that. I wrote that like, uh, here's my, I'm watching this scene, right? And I'm taking notes as I'm watching it. Oh, you know, it's nice that Seven learned a lesson here of like, you know, killing all these people didn't really get her that much. And maybe the revenge wasn't worth it and all that stuff. Yeah. And then, and then, at, then <laughs> within two minutes of me writing that, Rios did not learn the lesson. <laughs> Just like Rios, ah nah, it's fine. Rios, I I like this scene. Um, it's a good I, scene. I, I really do, and I kind of I put in my notes. I put in my notes. I know where this show is going, but I wish it was Rios and Seven in season two. Yeah, right. Like, well, I mean, I mean, uh, based on the end, they are going to be there. But no, I know, it was but just like them and not Picard. I yeah. knew where this was headed because we knew there was a golem, right? We all right. knew where this was going. But Chekhov's there was a, golem, <laughs> Chekhov's golem. There was a moment here where I was like, "Oh man, what if Picard was one what season if- and the next season was Star Trek La Sirena and it was Rios and Seven saving the galaxy?" Honestly, you could just do Rios and Seven, and it, I mean, I guess you keep Rafi because you spent so much time I with really her. Really, don't want to keep Rafi. I really don't want to keep Rafi either, but you know, I guess you gotta. And then, uh, you know, keep Girati too. Whatever, sure, she's science stuff. Rios likes her, so you know, yeah. keep her around. There you go. That's a crew. You could do something with that. Sure. Elnor's still alive bring for a, whatever. Bring goddamn a Soji reason. along. Bring a Soji along. Whatever. Sure. Yeah. It's a. It's it is a crew. You could do something with this, but I mean, you know, Chekhov's golem. So. Yeah, I I dared to hope when they started doing the uh, the scene with Picard and Data in the room. Oh, I man. was like, I was like, man, I are they cool enough to actually do the thing they, they're trying to do here? Are they? And cool then I immediately the, lost hope. Are they cool enough for the golem to be a red herring? Right, and not have it actually do what they obviously did. Uh, uh, I uh. I wanted to believe, especially as it like. As the scene uh, kept going, and then they they do a like into the light moment, and I was like, oh, they, they are they actually going to do it? I was pretty sure they weren't <laughs> like leading up to it, and then I I dared to dream, and of course my hopes were crushed immediately. So if they have a simulation of data inside of this box, why didn't Noonan or not Noonan Alton? Why didn't whoever? Soon, 
Yeah. Just remake data. Because he wanted to make other people. If you needed Picard's help, why wouldn't you just remake data? Yeah, I don't know. No good. No good answer here. Uh, and they even talked sense. about earlier that it's all it's, of the doji or the the uh, soji and dodge android synthetics had to be born from one of data's neurons i know so like they're like harvesting him for like material to create these other androids they literally, yeah that's what i was gonna say they literally turned him into like a miniaturized factory for making other androids yeah that's all they've got him it's, he's literally captive in there so it's kind of disgusting when he says it's pretty weird mortality gives meaning to human life so can you please kill me yeah and then they step all over that theory where you're like oh yep, my gosh yep. what an Man, amazing a- sentiment to say that- we have to do something meaningful because we're going to die and the the whole thing was that picard is showing you like the way to live and the right things to do and to give your life for good causes and these sort of things but i mean it's not a good enough cause to kill picard though like picard you got to bring him back you all could kill yourself this way it'd be fine yeah it's it all the speech and stuff that they did earlier in the episode is immediately undermined and it's a it's, bummer it's the wheels have come off right of the story that was set up through eight and a half episodes Yep, and the ideas that have been set up and the scenes even some of the scenes even that have were shot for this and I have some theories based on the uniform that Picard is wearing at the end there, right? Like, Picard's dead. Picard's been dead before, and Q came to see him, right? Multiple mm-hmm. times. He's Picard's been dead two to three times before this, right? Yeah. So, the theory that he couldn't come back, fine, whatever. But but writing the story for this was the end of Picard's life. Look at the amazing thing that he failed to do with the Romulans and the amazing thing he did accomplish at the end. Yeah. And then he gets to die with his best friend. Yeah. It, that is a beautiful arc right there. And then like someone in TV executive land sees it and is like, you got to bring it back for season two. Someone in TV executive land watched through episode seven and said... You need to make a second season of this. Yep. And that is my theory is that in somewhere in the middle of this around episode seven, they got that call. And then around episode eight and a half, they're like, can we rewrite the last episode and a half to use most of what we've already shot and maybe, you know, add in Noonan's kid and we'll create a way to bring Picard back it feels a lot like Picard was supposed to die there I, was there was so foreshadowing I, for him dying there's yeah there's lots of stuff in this entire if you think back this is an arc where a character it's not an arc of one show this is an arc of a character who finally failed we didn't get to see the failure although I'm reading that book the last best hope, which is the failure. There's a book about this there. Oh, uh, there's a book called Picard, the last best hope. And it is about the Romulan failure. Oh, so I, I started reading that, uh, and I will report back. It is written by a woman. I cannot remember her name. McCormick who writes a lot of Star Trek novels. So there's a chance of having a pretty nice Star Trek continuity vibe there. I'll let you know on a report back, but, but this is an arc of a character we've known his, not his whole life, but we've gotten to know his whole life through flash flashbacks and stories about him and all this kind of stuff. And right. he fails at what people perceive to be his end. So what you've watched this whole time is a redemptive arc. Yep. And a redemptive arc for a character at the end of their life, right? Mm-hmm. He's got a mm-hmm. brain tumor. He's got one chance to not have failed. Yep. How do you live with making that change? How do you? I don't. And uh, how do you I, I write this you from the beginning it. to be this? That's my question. Okay, so I obviously we weren't there. We have no idea. But okay, I'm not. I obs- didn't. I, I maybe we're giving I, the wrong look, vibe yeah, here. 
I liked watching yeah, this. I had a fun time watching it. I agree with you. I will not say that I liked it. Uh, I, I liked the show generally. I don't think I liked these last few episodes that much. But I I had a fun time watching them, and I won't like lie and say I didn't enjoy lar- like large swaths of this stuff. I'm picking it apart because of how messy and like in in hindsight, right? It feels, and it doesn't. It feels like this show and some of these end episodes and stuff. If anyone comes back to watch this in like five years, people are going to be like, "Oh, we'll skip like these episodes and kind of maybe don't watch the end." <laughs> like, you know, it's like a. It doesn't have the like the Star Trek thing that I come to Star Trek for. I felt like they wanted to do a big, cool space battle and they wanted to do some like fun Romulan sci-fi stuff. And then they just were like, how do we make all this happen? And the characters kind of just had to like fit in there. And then they got the call near the end of the season and were like, by the way, we're doing more. So uh, get them, get them alive uh, at the end. I, I, the I'm, amount, I'm convinced of the theory that this ended with his death with the silly amount of sitting around a table to explain how his golem body works so that no one was upset. You're not, you're not a synth. You're not immortal. You still are going to die. You're, you know, all this kind of stuff yeah. that they had to write in to basically be like, uh, you, you didn't die, I guess. Uh, you're not immortal. Uh, uh, yep. You know, and that to me smacks of like, this wasn't a theory from the beginning. I mean, they definitely p- foreshadow that golem. You know, he they walk in there an episode and a half before that, and he's like, "Look, yeah. I'm perfecting mind transfer." And it's like, I think oh, the okay. <laughs> so the so the reason I guess I wasn't uh, uh, the reason I think that maybe this was more planned than it seemed was th- the reason they couldn't have him be like an immortal golem or whatever is then you never care about any danger the character is in from here until the end of time, right? He's in this immortal body, so who cares? Like, yeah, you know, they'll just resurrect him again back on the magic uh, android manufacturer planet and in infinite Picards. Um, so of course they had to write it that way. But I mean, like, you're absolutely right in that it sucks. <laughs> like, it's not, I don't know. It, it is, and especially with all the stuff they were talking about earlier, just in this episode, it just like, they're like, they're literally taking their own story and cutting it off at the knees at the very end. It, yeah, it left such a bad taste in my mouth, man. I don't know that it left a horrible taste in my mouth. I just, I don't know what the weight is of a season two of watching this. There's no yeah. weight. He just saved the entire universe and reintroduced synthetics. Yeah. And what is we, he going to do? We, un- we undid all of the major problems that had started from the beginning of the show. You know, yeah. we knew the Romulans were behind it. Uh, we found out that that was true. We found the magical uh, Romulan death cult and we stopped them. We never encountered uh, fully our feelings about the Borg. Right. Uh, you know, but they set up here. Oh, look at the end. The Picard's back. We have a crew. Gerardi and Seven are in love. These other, yeah. these uh, two, conveniently forgetting that Gerardi has a son and Seven was with Chakotay. Uh, uh, you mean, uh, uh, or not Rafi Gerardi, Sorry, Rafi. Rafi and Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rafi and Seven, both of and, uh, and it, Okay, and I Rios. don't want to. I don't want to be that guy. It's totally possible that people find out later in life that they have different loves, right? Yeah, it's very uh, possible. Especially in a future universe, that could be a thing. I am not trying to step on that, but they didn't, they didn't do any, uh, there's no work to put in here. It's like, let's have a shot. And then next shot, there's no work put in there. That's yeah. just like, uh, these two at, are at least for each other. At least, at least the one of Gerardi and Rios makes was sense. Something although, that happened earlier in this show. Although, although are, are they, is she forgiven? Is that the thing you made Patrick's uh, body? So yeah. So she doesn't have to go turn herself in anymore. We just now? forgot. Once again, uh, there's that river washing away the yeah. town. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he says engage at the end. Hooray. Yay. <laughs> I... Oh, boy. Episode 10 is a mess. It's a mess. It's a real mess. 
It's a and big it just mess. seems like every dangling thread, people just cut them away and ignored them. Like the how Gerardi just never mentions she knew Sung was alive the whole time. Oh, hey, by the way, Maddox is worth working with a guy named Sung. Like, he's not an important character. You never heard of him. It's fine. Yeah. He's like a small indie band you've never heard of. Yeah, she at one point she says, Named you know, Guns Maddox always told me you're the guy with the great <laughs> encryption skills. It's like, wait, when did he say that to you and why have you never mentioned this before? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of open stuff here. I don't... I. There are moments in this show that were so good. That whole episode with Troy was so dang good. Mm-hmm. So good. I would watch just that again, probably two more times at least. I probably will. It's so it good. Was good. It was good. But I, I'm I'm happy that that I was not the only one that thought this was a mess at the end here. No, there's no way. Uh, I I don't want to be that kind of a guy, but it feels like any person who was a fan of like the Next Generation and even DS9 and Voyager comes to this show and watches it and is like, this is what I want from Star Trek. I, I don't know how that is, how those fans are super happy with this. I'm now, maybe if you were a fan of like you mentioned movies and you were like, the thing I remember is Picard and data in first contact. I remember them in, um, nemesis and those movies. And maybe those people who really only saw that, we're like, this is great. Maybe? I don't know, but I'm not that person, so... I fe- this just... It felt like when I watched the end of it, I was like, what was this supposed to be? Yeah. It didn't feel like it came out what it was like supposed to be. It felt like this was supposed to be the end of Picard's tale, maybe as a movie, but there's so many... For a TV show to have so many open-ended... What's happening on Mars? Like, what happened with Mars? What happened with this? What happened with that? Why, why are I mean, these like, things it, in the show that weren't connected at the end? Or, yeah, I mean the you know the thing. All of it was like it was really obvious to me that nothing was ever going to happen to Picard because like as early as like episode five or four even, Patrick Stewart was out there doing press for the show saying like we're going to have new people on in season two. And you're just like, well, okay. (laughs) So, you know, like there was never any tension that it was going to, you know, end the way that you might have thought that the story was going to lead it. Oh yeah. When the golem gets introduced, you're just kind of like, well, the dramatic tension of everything that is happening here is gone. No, I, like I said, I I saw an interview he was doing with Whoopi Goldberg on the view in like week four Mm -hmm. or five. Yeah. And he was like, Whoopi, you should come on and be on the show with us in season two. It's like, well, (laughs) oh, okay. I guess that brain thing isn't a problem. Yeah, I guess. Guess. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah. There's a there's a world here where they knew they were doing a season two and they went back and they cut out all this brain stuff. Maybe. And he got injured. Because it wasn't that. He got injured on the ship instead. And that's why he's dying, because then you could do a season two where Gerardi's the only one that knows he has a brain tumor. It, you know, and the brain thing isn't even a like not even there isn't that much total time of the series devoted to it. No, it's really. a way to kill him in the end. That's all it was. He could have died on the ship. The ship got shot. Yeah, it did. Right. Like there were mm-hmm. other ways that you could have saved some of this. I, I mean, we're rewriting what's it's not helpful yeah. to rewrite what's here. Let's yeah, talk. Look, look, yeah, let's talk, talk about, about what's what here is. and what's here was at times very good. Yeah, absolutely. And like there were some episodes earlier in this season that I like genuinely really like. I know which ones they were. Okay, yeah. I mean, look, I'm not a complicated (laughs) man. (laughs) I would say uh, Fun Time Planet Mm -hmm. and Troy Planet. Wait, what? The the one cut out in the middle there. Oh, sorry. Uh, The obviously the the. Episode was seven where they go to the fun time planet and yes, Rios is all dressed yes. up crazy. Of course. The card does the horrible, amazing accent. Easily the best episode of the entire series. I think the Riker Troy episode is the that best one, one is the se- is my second favorite. Okay, so, so that's my favorite yeah. for sure. Um and even episode eight I quite liked 
where there was so much build up potential and and that I, and like some way I midway through nine eight. I liked it. I did not hate eight. Nine yeah. I was not so happy with. Well, seven it falls apart good. in the middle of nine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it falls apart. Anyway, it fell apart. If it, it did, it kind of just it <sighs> fell flat. Maybe I don't know. I, yeah, there I, are episodes I the, of this I would rewatch. I liked so, some of it quite a bit. I so I I think uh, I wonder how you will because you watched some of this pretty recently, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder how you're going to feel about it in like two weeks. And by two weeks, I will probably have gone back to watch that Riker episode again. Yeah. But beyond that, I, 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 I rewatch most Star Trek, right? There's a rewatchability to a lot of the serialized Star Trek mm-hmm. that this just won't have for me. Nope. No, it never Just like will. Discovery probably won't like, either. Yep. I, that is a thing that I don't like with modern shows. Like, I don't go back and rewatch modern TV after I've seen it anymore. Yeah. Uh-huh. I know people uh, that rewatch, I, but I will go back and rewatch. Like I'll just pick like ep- season four, episode five of deep space nine or TNG and watch it. Yep. Yeah. There's very little. It's weird too, because shows that are like that, that are modern shows, law and orders and stuff like that. There's no rewatchability. Um, because it's all about the who done it of the week. Every of the mm. week show is now the who done it of the week instead of the Star Trek thing which is the like random adventures of the it's week. It's an it's an adventure but it's also a unless you I mean the original series is just an adventure show, but TNG especially is like a let's have a societal discussion of the week. <laughs> yeah, it, but it at the end of it is like a self-contained thing. Right, sure. whether it's a societal like moral problem, whether it is a monster, whether there's a Fine. you know whatever but conflict. Law whatever and Order is. SVU is the same thing. Yes, every time. Yeah, and that's people every love time. those police procedurals, and I cannot stand them. I, I but the, there's no rewatchability, even though no. it's a self-contained thing because it's but, just no. But yet, tons of people love watching those shows and watch them all the time. Yeah, even old ones. I don't get it. I don't know. All right. Well, I think we have talked this pretty much to death. <laughs> I agree. And now that we're talking about SVU, I think we need to quit. <laughs> we need to quit. Uh, hey, people out there, if you enjoyed Picard and or you didn't enjoy it and you want to tell us why, we will listen to you because yeah, we have opinions and you heard them here and we want to hear yours also. And you can do that at podcast at we were gamers dot com. That's the email address. We will can- read your opinions probably agree with them i will and, you know uh, what i'm going to interrupt you uh what's up because we got a message regarding this show i love it yeah so we should do it i think let's see hmm i agree with you guys this comes from kit in washington mm. jl is the thing I mo- dislike more than everything else on the series combined. Oh, dude. Kit, I, yes. You are <laughs> correct. I cannot tell. I think actually maybe that thing, that moniker, or whatever the, what is it when you call it like a pet name or something, mm-hmm. is the reason I hate Rafi so much. Oh, yeah. Maybe. If she didn't say JL, she'd be a thousand percent better character. He, the guy's in his dying moment. And she couldn't manage to say Jean-Luc. Or his name. Like, yeah. Gosh, I hate that name so much. She served under him for years, right? There's a moment at the end where you're you're trying to connect with someone that's dying in your arms. And you don't say something. There's an, oh, captain, my captain moment that should have happened. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, And instead they're like. Oh Kit. no, JL. Oh, and you're like, no. I'm turning stop this show it. off. Please stop. No more. Season two, just stop. Oh, just don't God. let her ever say it again. Okay, but Kit went on to say uh, that he really enjoyed the series, probably more than Disco, um, probably because there were characters that he was invested in. Uh, but he would watch more as long as it was 14 seasons on the farm with Picard, Laris, and Zaban. <laughs> you know what? Hey, I like Laris and Zaban. Yeah. 
After uh, what happened at the end of this show, I want the show on the vineyard with Laris and Zaban and Picard. Yeah, I know. So Kit's message went on to say that um, the show did some very good things because we got to see Romulan culture along the lines of things like the Klingons, Vulcans, Bajorans, Ferengi, and Cardassians that we had gotten before, but never with the Romulans. It's true. The meditation stuff and like a lot of their like oh, and extra factions and that we had never seen before. Yeah. Um, it was good stuff. Yeah. So thanks for your message, Kit. We appreciate that. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And if you want to be forgotten. like Kit, <laughs> podcast at WeWereGamers.com. Please write that in. All right. Yeah. That's uh, everything he said there is perfect. A hundred percent correct. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. So if you want to be a hundred percent correct, We'll just agree with you. Email. <laughs> it's just, yeah. um, I'm not that attached to my opinion. No. Sure. <laughs> so maybe by, I don't know if I'll finish that book in, I should be able to finish that book in a month. Eh, you know what? Don't, don't stress. Whenever we talk about it, we talk about it. Uh, and yeah, we will, I, I will be curious to hear uh-huh. about that. So at some point in the next episode or two, we're probably going to end up spooling up disco here. Yeah, season two of Disco. Man, I have heard that people on the internet have opinions. I really want to be part of that conversation. We're a few months too late, but uh, no, I, I. But you, look, we're going to have the conversation look, anyway. Picard because... ended. Picard. By the time this show goes up, in a week or two, I don't know what our schedule Whenever. is. Some Whenever, sometime around up. the next two weeks, Picard will have ended for a month. We are not part of the conversation on anything. In typical we were gamers fashion we are behind the curve <laughs> which is fine honestly you know what no it's like a it's like it's like a vintage burgundy dude mm, a labar aged to perfection you have to open it up and let it decant you gotta take these takes and swirl them around you can't just sip them to see if they're ready a chateau picard from the bottle okay yeah everyone that's I coming do out with their to takes drink that minutes chateau picard sometime Oh yeah, you should, and and we should talk yet. about it because I want to know. We should, yeah. Uh, but everyone, you know, that's what's happening. When you make a comment, the minute the show ends, and that, that's what you're doing. You're drinking it from the bottle. Let it air. Think about your thoughts, and yeah, sometimes you're just gonna be more frustrated when you drink it from the bottle straight away. It tastes like wine. When you drink mm-hmm. it after it's aired out a little bit, and sometimes the nose doesn't ever come in then you have to be a little disappointed. Like, mm, this bottle didn't have everything I wanted it to have. But it's still wine. We're having a good time. This wasn't corked. We didn't have to throw it no. away. Thank goodness we didn't. Imagine if we had stopped watching this show halfway through. We're just like, no, we hate this too much. I would not have enjoyed myself as much as I did. For all the faults of episode 10, I laughed my ass off. <laughs> I never laughed. Uh out loud like that but i certainly was like oh of course (laughs) when she made her faces with the magical device i couldn't stop laughing and it was supposed to be funny and that's fine yeah also magic pat planetary destruction five oh so good (laughs) pattern five i'm gonna rename my wi-fi space stero stero planetary Planets. sterilization pattern five that's what my wi-fi is going to be and the password is going to be terminal dogma uh, terminal dogma is a good uh wi-fi name okay well if you ever drive by a street in orange county and you see a wi-fi router named <laughs> planetary sterilization you know what, pattern I, five, I, I want to know the I, password hold on uh you know, they do this in Star Trek, though. They always have, like, take evasive pattern Gamma 3. But that's fine. Like, Gamma 3 is the way to tell the computer how to do several complicated maneuvers that a human being could not do in 3D space all at once. Sure. Right? Like, Gamma 3 means roll the ship this direction while hitting the thrusters another direction while sh- using the engines to go this direction with Look, a different they should have just yaw. drifted it. This is like, they should have like, just done what they do in Tokyo Drift. We have to feel the ship, you know, and it's like slide I mean, that's it That's what Rios there. is doing, right? Like, there's, there's room for all sorts of maneuvers on a ship. But like, let's start with planetary sterilization pattern five. Let's just do this. All 200 ships shoot the settlement, and then we're going to sterilize the planet. Mm-hmm. 
Like, why do we need a pattern five? What What is pattern one? Miss. And they're like, <laughs> exactly. oh, we don't want that exactly. one. <laughs> what is pattern two? Uh, okay, pattern two, we shoot this What's, other place. No, pattern, we don't want that one. Pattern two is only half the planet? Like, yeah. Oh, man. Did run into work this morning so that I could bring more computers home. More computers? Yep. I have two at home now. Is one non air gapped or something? Uh, well, there is now exceptions being made. So. Oh, so you can go to work less, hopefully. Yeah. I am one of the uh, trial people for this new VPN situation. Okay. With the air gap network. So. Uh, so do you have to like leave your phone in the fridge before you connect to the network? <laughs> no, uh, surprisingly. Okay. So there, there's a, anyway, there's a whole process, but it's not interesting or uh, exciting to talk about, but it is, uh, <clears throat> I now have like, if I turned the camera on behind me, you would see a monitor, another monitor that isn't like connected, but needs to be set up a bunch of cables <laughs> and like a giant desktop tower. It's just oh, a bunch man. of, my office gets smaller by the day. Yeah. Yeah. It was not huge to begin with. Yep. Yeah. Today, tomorrow, this weekend is my, or I think my office cleanup. Cause we started, we've finally started rearranging and organizing the house after all the construction. Mm -hmm. So the house is starting to look pretty clean. Is it mostly done? Just painting stuff left or is the painting? It's done yeah. Too? It's like painting. There's one section of drywall that needs to get repaired and replaced. Um, and it's a large enough area that I'm kind of, uh, I think I want the professional to do it. He does a really good job making it look seamless. Mm -hmm. You can tell when I do it. I like doing it. It's kind of almost therapeutic. I'll do it on small patches where you'll never see it again because it's behind something. Mm -hmm. But texture wise and how complicated the de the depths of the walls are here because some of them are plaster and some of them are repairs and some of them are drywall mm -hmm. and all that. Um, mm -hmm. He's a guy that does it every day. It's kind of worth the money. Anyway, we have yeah. a fuck load to talk about with these three episodes. Yeah. I'm going to open this thing and hit this record button. <coughs> Don't worry, it's allergies. I wasn't even going to say anything. At least I'm semi-confident that's what the problem is. <laughs>